Hey everybody, Brian Garcia, Meteorologist, National Weather Service, San Francisco Bay Area, Monterey Bay Regions. We're moving into an active pattern, so we thought we'd do this little video for you all. Um, we do have uh, widespread rainfall coming in this weekend, but there's even more than that because we have rain, we have wind, we have waves, and guess what? We even have snow in the forecast for our area. So we'll hop right into it here. We're going to take a look at the satellite, satellite image. Uh, really kind of lighten up with great colors in the clouds here. The, the clouds aren't actually that color. This is infrared satellite. So this is the boundary here that's actually going to be sliding south over the next couple days into our area. Ultimately, it's going to drop in, kind of stall, set up a nice little pathway for all of this moisture here to just kind of rip right along, right along it and head straight towards California. So what does that look like? Okay. This is one of the models that we run in-house here, so just kind of bear with me as we kind of march through it. This is one hour precipitation, so every hour it's what the uh, precipitation accumulation could be. So as we go into the weekend, we'll start to see the precipitation come into the frame. Start to see a little bit North Bay here, finally hitting North Bay. Uh, that's, the, that's the 12th, um, and like I can't remember my days right now, so that's Sunday. There we go, Sun Sunday the 12th at 7Z, um, and that's at 8Z, so uh, minus eight hours. So that's midnight on Sunday. So it's, starting to, so it's starting to come into North Bay. And you can see it starting to spread south a little bit. And it's really weak. You see really weak echoes here initially. But as we keep creeping forward, there's that boundary. You can kind of see it. And if I know these wind barbs are probably really dim on the screen. But we have southerly winds here, kind of westerly winds here. There's that boundary. And then it just decides to stall out. It kind of wants to stop someplace in the Bay Area. And this is like between Marin and Santa Cruz County right now. But all the models continue to shift it a little bit farther south in terms of the stall. But then you can see the amplification. We'll go back a frame here with uh, some intensification of rainfall. And then look at that, there comes some more rain and boom, it starts to really hit the Bay Area as a whole. And by this point, it's Sunday night, uh, overnight Sunday into Monday morning. Uh-oh, lost it there, go back here. So we uh, gotta watch my fingers reaching up to the top. So we really see it start to spread across much of the Bay Area, Santa Cruz Mountains. And then as we keep heading in forward in time, you really see it highlighting the Santa Cruz Mountains, um, but then we also start to see it highlighting the Santa Lucias down in Monterey County. So a lot of precipitation rolling in this weekend uh, and into Monday and actually remaining on into Tuesday, depending upon where you're at. If you're South Bay and Southward, it's probably even gonna remain into Tuesday. And let's just keep rolling this right on through, right on to the end of the model run. Hopefully you can see under my arm here, all this precipitation slowly kicking out. Uh, I think I just accidentally hit the end there. And there it is, that's the end. So by the time we finally get into Monday afternoon, especially as we get into Tuesday, we'll see that entire system start to eject out to the southeast. So one of the things that uh, we think about with rainfall and on burn scars that we got in 2020 is post wildfire debris flows. So it's really important to know your risks. So if you live uh, near the river burn scar, especially off a of river road, Make sure you pay attention because areas that have slid in the past are prone to slide. In this case, again, there's a lot of mud up there, so uh, be careful with those. Other burn scars, we're not expecting any sort of debris flows with any of our burn scars with these rain rates, but it's always a possibility, so it's something we're going to have to watch and pay attention to. So the other thing is the wind, and actually I'm going to flip back here and we're going to go look at surface wind gust here for a hot second. Uh, let's just pop right on into the weekend and we'll see the winds start to crank up. And so we'll see the winds. Here's the front, so we got winds, those are greens. These are wind gusts, greens and yellows. So we're somewhere in the 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gust range. And you can see that front coming in there. And then as it moves south, you can see those winds really start to pop up into the 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gust range in the coastal mountains and right along the coast. And these winds are coming out of the south. So these winds are going to be really gusty along the area right ahead of that boundary, right ahead of that front. And as that front slowly slides south, we'll see it slide down through Monterey County, potentially wind gusts up into the 40 and 50 mile per hour range. And then we'll kick all that out. We get a few little wind gusts post uh, post front, but uh, for the most part, all of the strongest winds will kick out of the area. 
So one of the things that we're going to have to talk about is power outages as well. So lots of power outages potential with this system, with branches uh, falling down off of trees, with whole trees coming down. Um, so if you have loose items out in your yard or out at your uh, place of work, make sure that you take care of those, tie those down. So now we've covered rain, we've covered wind. Let's talk a little bit about the rivers. So we do have a little bit of moisture in the soil. So as the rain falls on the soils, it'll actually run off into the, into the riverbeds and streams and things like that. The soils will absorb some for sure, but we will have some runoff as well. So this is really great for reservoirs and it's really great for our drought concerns as well. So we'll have to see what the drought monitor looks like in the weeks to come following the storm. But one of the things I wanna, wanted to show you here is um, kind of what it might look like for the river forecast. So if we, uh, if we take, for example, the Guadalupe and San Jose, and we're looking at this black line, that's the official forecast from the California Nevada River Forecast Center. And the rest of it, all those colors, that's the range of possibilities. The farther out you go away from that black line or from the, the orange center here is really, uh, it becomes less and less likely to happen. And once you get beyond those colors, it's not likely to happen at all, like 0% chance. So we're gonna see some sharp rises in area creek streams and rivers. So if you live near one of those, um, don't, go, don't go near it, especially Monday, Tuesday, as those rivers come up. Um, because it's going to take a little while for those bigger basins to respond. Some of the smaller ones are going to respond much faster. If there's uh, trash down in there, for example, you know, it might be a good day to clean it out tomorrow, uh, especially if you're like the owner of it or you just care about your environment. Clean that out tomorrow. Otherwise, it's just going to get washed down into the bay. So the rivers are going to come up fast. Uh, make sure that you follow us on social media at NWS Bay Area. Um, and this is the latest rain forecast, our official forecast out on the Twitter sphere. So you can see really the highlight, Santa Cruz, Monterey County, North Bay is becoming a little bit less as that system really slides south and sits. Uh, let's see, so flooding, if there are flooded roads, don't drive through them. That's, please just don't drive through them. Just turn around, don't get your car swept away, don't get like flipped over someplace. It's just not worth it. Live to see another day because it doesn't take a lot of water to make those tires full of air float. So if you've ever floated down a river on a tube, imagine that in your car with swift moving water, it's just not a great place to be. So last thing that we'll talk about are the ocean conditions. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and stop this and we'll just kind of step through here as we get into um, into next week. So now we're talking uh, we're talking getting into, let's see, uh, Monday, Tuesday, 13th, 14th. So this is the 14th. We see all these wave heights building in. And so by the time we get into this time frame, we're going to see some long period swells start to show up across the Bay Area. That means we could see breaking wave heights at the beaches in that 15 to 20 foot range in those exposed areas. For places like Santa Cruz, like if you're thinking uh, uh, like Pleasure Point or Capitola, it's going to be somewhat less than 15 to 20. But if you go to open ocean, like you're out towards Half Moon Bay, uh, you're out at um, uh, like Mavericks or even Ocean Beach, there's going to be a lot of wave activity and a lot of current. Um, so there's going to be a lot of current out there. If you get into a rip, conserve your energy. You're going to need that energy in the cold water because the water is very, very cold. Um, and yell for help. I would say don't even try to fight the rip, just let it take you and yell for help and let somebody come get you. Conserve that energy and stay afloat. But most of all, I, I want you all to be, um, to be really safe this weekend and into early next week as we encounter this next atmospheric river that's coming into our area. But make sure that you take care of yourselves, take care of each other, take care of your pets, and most of all, be good to yourself and be good to each other. See everybody, bye.